My name is Abhishek Jain and welcome back to the tutorial series on how to implement a SQLite 3 database with the Python programming language. And in a today's video, I just choose a topic which is very interesting in terms of designing a database. So the topic is constraints. So what is constraint? Constraints are basically a rule which we apply on either on a column label or at the table label to control the data in terms of, in order to actually ensure that the data which we are storing are accurate and reliable, right? So in today's video, we are just going to focus on the constant which we define at the column label. So let's get into the demo part and see how we can do that. To expedite the process, right, to expedite the explanation, what I have done is I have already created a small program. And here you can see we have a connection, then we define a cursor and now, just a, a small limitation which SQLite 3 has, right, in terms of uh, implementing the constraint. In SQLite 3, you cannot add or remove the constraint. So you have to heavily rely on the stage when you are creating your table. So that's the reason I just created a, a query where I just try to have all kind of frequently used constraints. So you can see here what I'm doing is I'm just creating a stock table. And in this stock table, the very first column is stock ID, which is defined as a primary key. So primary key is basically help us to uniquely identify the records from the table. Right. So as I mentioned, it's uniquely it help us to uniquely identify the record. It means that it ensures the uniqueness of the column. But primary key can be defined on single column or it can be defined on the number of columns. Right. Then we have a stock name which we define as a not null. So by default, whenever we create any column, right, so that is that can have a null value. But now we are exp imposing that it cannot be a not null. So a stock name has to be something, right? Then we have a unique. Unique means, as name suggests, this is another constraint basically that ensures that this column will have a unique value for all the records. It cannot be duplicated. Then we have a stock price, and here we have a put a constraint which is related to a some condition. So for doing that, we are using a check keyword, and inside that we are just providing that the column which is stock price should be always greater than 10. If it is going to be less than 10, then it is going to complain, and we're gonna see all these stuff with the program. The last one is default. So default means that if we don't provide any value to the stock quantity, it is going to be defaulted with whatever the value you are giving here. So this since this is an integer, so it is going to be default with a zero. Right? Then we are having an insert statement. So here by default, I'm inserting a value for all the columns. So I'm not mentioning the column name. So the one, then test technology one, text one is my symbol, then 11 and 10. So 11 means it is actually satisfying this con condition. So are we going to see all these stuff if what happens if we are not going, if this condition is not matching or we are just providing us some null value or something like that. Then we have insert query. Okay, now we have, I define a select query. And here you can see I'm first creating a query table, then inserting a record and then selecting the data. Right. So if I just run this query and see what happens, right. So it didn't complain. It just, you know, give me, you know, the record which we have inserted. What happens if I run the same program second time, right? So it's complaining a stock table already exists. It means that it is just failing. So that is where the another concept or the another keyword which comes handy, which is if not exists. So what does it mean? So it is just telling to the database. It's not a constant. Basically, it just, you know, the other way. To, to ensure that if you have a create table statement in your command, how can you overcome in case that table is already created? So if not exist means that it is instructing when cursor is going to execute this statement to just check whether this table is exist or not. If it exists, then it is going to bypass that. So I'm just saving it and I'm just running it. Now you can see it's just failing for the unique constraint at the stock ID, right? You can see on my screen, which is I'm highlighting, right? Why it is complaining? Because we are inserting a same stock ID, right? So let's change it to two and save it and run it. But you but but you realize this 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 issue has been uh, gone, right? The table stock table already exists, though we are just creating this. We are executing this uh, create query statement, right? So this is what the uh, if not exist, uh, you know, these three keywords are doing for us. So it's basically bypassing this. So this time. Unique constant failed, and this time, but unique constant failed for stock symbol, not for a stock ID, right? Because we are just trying to have insert a same value. So let me just change it to two, and let's see what happens now. This time, we have a second record because it's not, you know, breaking any of the other constraint, right? What if, if I just insert a null, right? So null is a keyword through which we actually define nothing. 
don't get confused null means nothing it's cannot be blank it cannot be zero because lo most of the beginners get confused uh, they, they consider if it is a text field then they feel that the blank value would be null no null means nothing not even a blank not even a zero for the numeric value so when i just put this null it complains not null constraint why because for the stock name it cannot be null so we have to have a some value here right so let me just bring the older value back okay so if i run this this is going to complain for the stock id so not null has been gone so we have seen primary key not null and a unique so for check constraint right so what i'm going to do is let's say i'm just going to make it three make it three make it three it won't complain but if i just put this nine let's see what happens it should complain and it is complaining for check constraint right so that is also good and let me just dwell and save it this time it should work right so now we can see another record you can see right now the last one for that one i have just created a simple query let me just copy this let me just replace here what i'm doing here is i'm just giving a value for the four columns and this time i'm not providing a data for stock quantity because we are using a default constraint and i'm just expecting that that stack quantity for this record should be zero so the id you can see it's six and text six not null so if i'll just put null then it's gonna fail so let me just put some technologies four and let me just put this to have some similarity keep it six so that we have a consistent data okay so now you can see we have just provided six this 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 and now it's having zero right so this is that is how we can use this default so now we have seen how we can use check primary key not null unique and default constraint right so now you can uh, so what happens in real time right so in real time when we design an application we know that okay in this column always we need we expect that this value should be greater than something value some value right and if 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 you if user is not providing then it should be defaulted with that this particular thing right so it comes with a business use case right so how, what kind of application you are building and what's the business use case and depending upon that you will design your table and based on that logic you will decide which constraint will be apply on which column right so that's it from my side for this video if you have any feedback or suggestion please feel free to put that in a comment section and i would do my best to just apply those feedback and a suggestion in my future video and my upcoming video thanks for watching this and stay healthy and keep learning a new stuff